Healthcare is one of the most debated topics in America. Mark Warner will take a look into American po politics later in the show. Both varsity soccer teams competed this weekend in their second rounds of state playoffs Friday night. Mackenzie Hamilton is in studio to recap their performances. American Sign Language students took a trip to Babe's Diner where they practiced the skills they learned in class. Lexi Curranton has the story later in the show. Eagle Nation News starts right now. Good morning, Prosper High School. Today is Monday, April 3rd. I'm Abby Smith. And I'm Sola Kantai. Here are today's top stories. Just this morning, a bomb went off in a Russian subway, killing at least 10. The blast in St. Petersburg has wounded at least 50, and President Putin has vowed a full investigation into this event. Video production students traveled to Anaheim, California to compete in an international competition with students from all over the world. Students were given a prompt with eight hours to write and film and turn in a complete project. Prosper placed first in short film documentary and first honorable mention in short story. This past weekend, Color Guard competed at Capel High School in the Scholastic A Category 4 competition. Color Guard received an overall score of 80.5, reaching an 80 for the first time ever. Silent Dinner is an event where ASL students have the opportunity to display their sign language skills. Lexi Currington has the story. Last Thursday on March 30th, over 30 ASL students met at Babes and had their first annual silent dinner. This event tested students' sign language skills and celebrated the ASL Honor Society inductees. It was a sign language social where we all got together, ASL 1, 2, and 3, and tried to use our signing skills the whole time. The silent dinner is inspired by students being able to speak in their target language. ASL students meet together at a restaurant and just enjoy time hanging out, socializing, but socializing using their newly acquired language. Although many languages have social events, this one in particular required no spoken words, only energetic gestures and facial expressions. Basically, once you stepped onto like the premises, you had to turn off your voice. You had to sign everything. So they were signing to us, and we had to sign to each other, and they handed out little cards that showed us how to sign the different foods we would be getting. And it was basically like a normal dinner, a normal social, but all voices were off, and we were all just signing to each other. While this dinner may have presented challenges, it also encouraged the practice of the skills that the students are learning in class in a more relaxed environment. It was kind of challenging trying to think of signs you didn't know or like trying to convey to the waiters that you wanted a refill or you wanted a barbecue sauce and they're, they're so confused. Drawing from my own personal experiences and the experiences I recently saw, students when they first come in, they're very timid and shy and they may only use one or two signs. And then all of a sudden, you know, the food comes out and we're all hanging out and socializing. And you kind of see that little timid signing turn into big, full, expressive language. So that's just my overall goal and what I love to see about the silent dinner. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Lexi Curitan. When we come back, Mark Warner takes a deeper look into the American Health Care Act. Healthcare has been a hot topic of debate as of late, and while there is yet to be a replacement for the Affordable Care Act, there are still many questions about the American healthcare system. Here to clear up any confusion is Mark Werner with a political report. The first major legislative item of the Trump administration is the repeal and replacement of Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. 
However, many are still confused on the differences between the two parties' proposals for the health care plan. The Affordable Care Act, or ACA, was signed into law by President Obama to deal with the country's struggling health care system. The U.S. has ranked behind most developed nations in terms of price and accessibility of health care for years, and President Obama's plan had three main components to deal with these issues. First, it expanded Medicaid and Medicare programs that gives health care to more poor and elderly people. Second, it created regulated and subsidized marketplaces in each state by allowing people to buy insurance from private companies. However, for companies to get access to these marketplaces, they have to comply to new regulations that prevented them from denying coverage to people with pre-existing medical conditions. This allowed for many people who previously couldn't get coverage because they were too sick to get covered. Third, to make the system cost effective, the ACA also created an individual mandate that everyone in the U.S. had to have health care or pay a tax. Health insurance companies could therefore afford to insure more high-risk patients because they could make up the profits insuring younger, healthier people who were put into the system. As a result of the ACA, 20 million people have been able to get health care coverage that they were previously denied. However, many health insurers have since pulled out of these health care marketplaces in many areas because of low profits leading to rising health care premiums. Also, the ACA has still left many Americans without health insurance. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Mark Werner. This past weekend completed UIL academic competition with speech and debate. Prosper High School swept every category, putting up a record high number of points. Let's kick it to Reagan Ranser for your UIL academic results. Good morning, Prosper High School. Let's take a look at your UIL academic results. Lincoln Douglas debate, Morgan Key, district champion. Informative speaking, Alec Antonakakis, district champion. Persuasive speaking, Zach Elmer, district champion. Prose Interpretation, Karthi Shrikant, District Champion. Poetry Interpretation, Zach McConnell, District Champion. And these are the individuals advancing to region. And those were UIL academic winners. Congratulations to all. After this commercial break, Hannah Dennis is in studio with your three-day weather forecast. Get your prom tickets online beginning April 3rd. The link can be found on the Prosper High School website. If you have received an invitation to apply for the National Honor Society, you can find the application on the NHS website. Applications are due no later than Friday, April 28th. Prosper Fashion will have its Spring Summer Fashion Show on Tuesday, April 11th at 6.30 p.m. in the PHS Arena. Welcome back, Eagle Nation. Yesterday, storms rolled through North Texas once again. There were reports of weak tornadoes touching down in the Austin area. The damage was not as extreme as it was from the storms we had earlier last week. Moving on to the three-day forecast, today the high reaches 76 and we have no chance of rain. It will be a partly cloudy day. The winds will be fairly strong with them reaching 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow the high reaches 80 and we have a 20% chance of rain overnight. The clouds will be appearing more throughout the day. The winds will pick up slightly, reaching 10 to 20 miles per hour. There will be a cold front moving in overnight to take effect Wednesday. Wednesday, the high reaches 72 and there is no chance of rain. It should be a mostly sunny day. The winds will pick up even more with them reaching 15 to 25 miles per hour. Looking towards the rest of the week and part of the weekend, as of now there is no, chance, no big chance of rain for this week, but that could change. I'm Han Dennis and this month is Lawn and Garden Month. After this commercial break, Mackenzie Hamilton is in studio with your Eagle Sports Update. The Spring Blood Drive will be Wednesday, April 5th. Sign-ups are during lunch starting today. Prosper High School's Radio Club meets every morning from 7.45 to 8.15 and during Eagle Time on Tuesdays and Fridays. Please stop by if you have any interest in joining the program. You can check out the website at phsradio.com. Prom tickets can be purchased online beginning April 3rd. The link can be found on the Prosper High School website. Abby, the girls' soccer team played at Clark Stadium against Mesquite Poteet on Friday night. And the boys traveled to Prestonwood 
Christian Academy where they played Lovejoy and even ended up in penalty kicks. Mackenzie Hamilton has more. Today we will be recapping the girls and boys playoff games from Friday where both of the teams look to clench the title of area champions. First, let's start with the boys team. Traveling to Prestonwood to take on the Lovejoy Leopards, Reese Ranzer has the highlights on the game. The Eagles face off the Lovejoy Leopards at Preston Wood in Plano for the second round of playoffs last Friday. With no time left in the second half and no points on the board, the game continued into two 10-minute overtimes. Neither team scored during the overtimes, which then continued the game to end in penalty kicks. With goals from Kate York and Cole Orchek and saves from goalie Josh Goss, the Leopards still managed to outscore the Eagles, ending the game with a final score of 3-2. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Reese Ranzer. Across town, the Lady Eagles soccer team faced Poteet Mosquit at Clark Stadium, who was coming off a 3-0 win against Texas High School. After a close call with Frisco Heritage last Friday, the Lady Eagles headed into their second round of playoffs looking to dominate the game and doing just that. Within just three minutes, Gabby Gamboa found the back of the net to put Prosper up 1-0 over the Pirates. Immediately after, Deanna Ardonias followed with another goal of her own. To end off the half, Katie Lapamarda scored and the defense kept Mosquit to zero goals. In the second half, Deanna Ardonias scored two more goals, giving herself a hat trick for the night. And also had the assist on Kristen Knipe's finish. The final score of the game was 6-0 Prosper, earning the girls the area championship for the second year in a row. The ladies will be playing again at Boyd High School at 7 o'clock against the returning state champions, the Centennial Titans, on Tuesday. On Wednesday's show, we will be discussing the results of the softball and baseball team's games from Friday night. Until next time, I'm Mackenzie Hamilton, back to you at the desk. Thank you, Mackenzie. Here are a few final announcements. The March Madness Tournament of Books bracket has been up all month and it is time to vote for your favorite book or series. The two top books are Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and the Red Queen series. Vote for your favorite either in the library or online at the library homepage by this Friday, April 7th. Voters are eligible for prizes. Everyone who votes goes into a drawing for prizes. National Art Honor Society will have a mandatory attendance meeting April 6th in the library starting at 4 p.m. Students should check Google Classroom for details. There will be a mandatory meeting in the LGI room after school for all Relay for Life team captains on Tuesday. If you have any questions, please see Allie Mencher. Search Courageous Persuaders YouTube channel and under the 2017 finalist playlist find the video called Where Alcohol Can Take You. Watch the video and like it to vote for Mackenzie Hamilton. Color Guard training sessions are coming up for all Prosper ISD students. Auditions will be held at Prosper High School later this month. Well, that's going to do it for you today. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Sola Kantai. And I'm Abby Smith. Live long and prosper.